In this video, I'm gonna be explaining how to track custom data inside of your Salesforce system. As I'm sure you know as well as I do, tracking the data that is unique to your business is really, really important to make a CRM system as useful as possible. And in this video, I'll be explaining how to use custom fields inside of Salesforce to do exactly that. Welcome to the channel, my name is Nick. Thank you ever so much for giving this video a watch. Hopefully it will be of value to you. Just before we get into the video, if you need help with training or setup of your Salesforce system, check out my website below. We would be delighted to help. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. In this video, like I just mentioned, I'm gonna be explaining how to track custom data inside of your Salesforce system. As I'm sure you're all aware, um, Salesforce is an out of the box package, which means it tracks the basic information and it's designed for everyone to use it. It's not gonna be bespoke to your business. Every unique business is gonna to want to track specific data about their business, about their sales activities. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. Now, firstly, let me walk you through an example of when we would, when we would want to use a custom field to track custom data, okay? So I'm gonna use the opportunities uh, area or opportunities object for an example in this video, but you can use and add custom data points to any of the different objects inside of Salesforce. So head over to opportunities. I'm just gonna select my opportunity here. Now. This is the example, so let me explain the example first. We, as a business, develop bespoke CRM systems for other businesses. Now, when a prospect approaches us, they usually have a system in mind that they would like help developing. We want to be able to track on our sales or on our opportunities which system they would like help developing whether it be Salesforce, Monday.com, Zoho, HubSpot, Microsoft Dynamics. So we would like a field exactly the same as one of these where we can select which system they need help with. Okay, so that's just an example for this video. Your use case might be entirely different. What we want to do in order to do this is go to the cog in the top right hand corner and go to setup. This can be accessed from anywhere inside of the Salesforce system. And then we want to go to the setup page. Now this is super, super simple. So please do not feel overwhelmed. It is really, really simple. We then want to go to the left hand side, go to platform tools, and then underneath we want to go to objects and fields and then click object manager. Okay, I'm just gonna get rid of this. Now, depending on which object or area inside of your Salesforce system, you are adding a custom field to. You might be able to see at the top if it's the account. Otherwise, just use the quick find up the top right hand corner and just search opportunities. Um, and then as you can clearly see, the opportunity has appeared. What we need to do is just click on it. Then go to fields and relationships, okay? So fields are the different data points. And I'm sure if you look at all of these and then we head back, you will see them on here, okay? So each field, is a different unique data point. And this is how we capture data inside of a Salesforce system. We will obviously wanna go ahead and create a new field. So what we need to do is press the new button up the top here. Press new, you're gonna be presented with this screen most likely. Do not panic. All we need to do is just press the click here to open this page in Salesforce Classic. Now this is the Salesforce Lightning. The back end is taking a little bit of time to catch up. So it's not a problem. Just click here to open this page in Salesforce Classic. Now, we it does look a little bit different. Do not worry. We are on the right page anyway. So we are on the opportunities new custom field. Okay, perfect. We're in exactly the place that we want to be. Now we have got a very, very long list of field options. Now we have got inside of Salesforce different field types, okay? Each field type is gonna allow you to track data in a different way. So let me walk you through these first. These are a little bit more complicated. So checkbox, that is literally a tick box. Tick yes on unticked, simple as that. Currency, so that's money, so you can set the currency up, so whether it be dollars, pounds, euros, and then you can put in an amount, so $1,000, and then it will track it as dollars. 
We've got date, so literally just a date field. So 10th of the 10th, 99. Then we've got date and time. So 10th of the 10th, 99 at 3.30 p.m. Email, that's an email address. Geolocation is a location. Then we've got number. Now that is not a phone number. That is strictly a number, okay? And that's obviously not currency. That's not money either. So that's just a number. And then we've got percent. So literally just a percentage. We've got phone number and then we've got pick list. So pick list is actually the one that we're going to be using in this example. So a pick list is a list of different options. So like I said, we've got five different options. We've got Monday.com, Salesforce, HubSpot, Zoho and Microsoft Dynamics. And on our opportunities, we want to pick one for whichever one we are developing for the client. We've also got multi-select pick list. Now, this is a pick list, exactly the same as the previous one. However, we can select multiple options as opposed to only being able to select one. We've then got text, so that is small text. And then we've got text area, so that's actually a slightly larger area to write in text. And then we've got text area long, rich, and text encrypted. They're all slightly different, obviously. I'm sure you can work out what they are. And then the final two, we've got time, which is 2.40 p.m., whatever. And then we've got URL, which is a link. Now, those are probably what you guys are after. Select the one that is most relevant for you and what data you would like to track. The ones up here are a little bit more complicated, so I will briefly go over them. We've got auto number, so this is an automatically generated number, so it's essentially a unique reference number. We've got a formula field, which is a calculation. We've got a roll-up summary. That's a read-only field that displays a sum, a minimum, or maximum value of a field in a related list. So again, probably something you guys are not going to look to use. We got lookup relationships. This is where we can connect one object to another and create a one-to-one, one-to-many, many-to-one relationship with different objects inside of the Salesforce system. And we got an external lookup relationship where you can create links outside of the Salesforce organization. So you might want to look, you might want to go ahead and use the lookup relationship. The formula column as well, you might look to use. Um, the others, it's, ent- look, it's entirely up to you. Play around and test everything to your heart's content. But I think the majority of the stuff is here. So let's go ahead and select the field that I'd like to create, the pick list. Once you're happy and you've selected the right field, press the next button. You will then be presented with this page here. We first need to assign a field label, so give it a name. So CRM system is the name I'm going to call it, but of course you can call it whatever you want. The values are going to be use global pick list value set or enter values with each value separated by a new line. That's what I want to do. So we've got Salesforce, we've got Dynamics 365, we've got Monday, we have got Zoho, and then we have also got HubSpot. Okay. Your custom field setup is going to look different dependent on what field you have selected. Okay. So do not worry. It's all going to be fairly self-explanatory. I'm sure you guys are all perfectly capable of working it out. If you do have any questions, just comment below. I'm more than happy to answer. And then we've got a couple of options. Display values alphabetically, not in the order entered. So I'm going to use that. And then we can select a default value. So use first value as default value. I do not want to do that. And then we've got restrict pick list to the values defined in the value set. Yes, you do not want people adding additional values to the list. Then we can add a description, we can add help text, and then we can select a few additional options. We can select whether this field is required. So that means it has to be entered, data has to be selected before you can save that particular record. And we can also auto add to custom report types. So add this field to existing custom report types that contain this entity. So you can select to do that or not. Once you're happy, just press the next button again. We've created our new field we've just got some final things we need to do so with the security setup we have got a few options this just allows us to hide show make the field read only to certain users inside of the system so you can see we've got a list of users here let's say we only want our standard user to be able to read it so they cannot enter the values change the values of the field let's say we do not want them to be able to see it we will untick that and untick the visibility as well 
super super simple stuff uh, whether how much this applies to you guys i'm not too sure again you can test this as you wish once you're happy just press the next button and now on this page what we need to do is select the page layout that this particular field is going to be applied to so i've only got one layout and on most objects there's only going to be one layout so just ensure that that layout is selected and that is it press save done Congratulations, you have now created a new custom field inside of Salesforce, so you can go ahead and track the data that you would like to track inside of your Salesforce system. So now, if I then head back to my CRM system or the Salesforce system, go to the CRM crew, Salesforce area, just hit the refresh button, you will now see the CRM system option here. Congratulations, whatever field you added, you will now see that on this page. You can press the pencil button, and if I go ahead and select, you will see all of our different options. So I'm gonna select Salesforce and press the save button. So now I'm gonna go ahead and show you one final thing. I wanna show you how to move this field around the page. So you might not want your new field in a particular place, wherever it's landed. I'm gonna show you how to move it across to a different area. So. If we then go back to the editing page we were on, this is the opportunity fields. Go to the customize tab up the top here, just under build. And then what we wanna do is go to the object that you were customizing or you created the new field for. Obviously in this instance, it was opportunities. If it was accounts, if it was contacts, if it was leads, just use the drop down there. We then wanna to go to page layouts under the opportunities drop down menu. So page layouts, and then just go ahead and press the edit button and you will be able to see the um, page as is on your actual Salesforce system. What we can do is just select the field that we would like to move. So this is the CRM system um, field that we just created. And let's say I wanna move it to the additional information area of the page. It's really, really easy. Once you're happy, just go to the opportunity layout or the layout area up the top, just press the save button and then head back to your Salesforce page, press the refresh button and you will now see that it has moved and you can do this as much as you please. So hopefully this video has covered everything, how to create this new field and then how to move it about as well. Um, and I'll see you in a moment's time. Hopefully you have now set up your Salesforce system to track all of the unique data that your business collects and needs to manage. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you have, please drop it a like, maybe even consider subscribing. If you have any further questions at all, feel free to drop a comment below or you can email me as my details are in the description below and I will do my best to answer any questions you do have. Thank you ever so much for watching and I'll hopefully see you shortly in the next video. Thank you and goodbye.